So, where were you? <laughs> yeah, it's a, but then you actually see Kun frown. Please do not spook the young master. We need him alive. <laughs> oh, that Excuse doesn't sound what? obvious at all. <laughs> Whisper is still waiting patiently for everyone to explain what they were doing when before he arrived. Hmm. Well, I believe this is a good opportunity, Vel. Oh, we're doing this here, she says aloud. Might as well. And yeah, you hear of, if I'm understanding the situation correctly... You, Whisper, suddenly hear a voice coming from absolutely nowhere. Well, okay, it sounds like it's coming from the direction of young Klaus, or perhaps Corrin, you're not quite sure, because neither one of them have moved their lips. And you're pretty sure they don't sound like a, uh, they don't, neither one of them sound like a woman. Though with that hair on Corrin, you can't quite be sure. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I knew that would come. Look, can we go someplace a little more secluded? Yeah, privacy right now for this is probably the best option. Well, where, where do you choose to go? Let's go into a dark alley. <laughs> 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 Whisper, uh, suggest, uh, wh Whisper walks over to the window and says, how about the roof? You're outside at the moment. You're, no, like, outside. just outside the shop. Hmm. Got it. Whisper, uh, po then points up and says, how about the roof? Well, that's certainly You'd think private. I'm going to blive up there! I can't levitate you that far yet, dear. Oh, which reminds me. Uh, Corum hands Klaus the stiletto. And, once again, he's holding it between two fingers. <laughs> Just put it on your belt, dear. I'll take care of it. Okay. Carefully puts it there, in there. Hmm. Lace. Alright, let's, I suppose, go up to the roof. Hmm. Okay. Uh, can I roll an instant? I suppose... I, 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 can uh, whisper? So, how long uh, is this? Still the first day? Yes. 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 It's still the first. Yes. It's still the first day. I'll let you know. I'll let you know if the day changes. It is still the first day. Okay. Okay. I uh, believe I may have been uh, may have been more confusing earlier. I meant to say that it's a few weeks in the time between this current flashback and when the party was had the Emidius Res fight. But what we're role-playing now is just that afternoon. Okay. Or evening about by this time. So, uh, did you want to make a roll, Jeremy? Um, I was, well, I was suggesting perhaps an insight check to see whether or not he's capable of uh, deducing uh, not insight sorry that's fifth edition and that would be sense motive, sense motive. Be... yeah sense motive or investigation no not investigation that's all sense motive yeah. you're yeah. looking for sense motive you may make a sense motive check indeed but before you do that if you guys are going up onto the roof i'm going to need to make need all of you to make stealth checks oh dear <laughs> even me except, really except bell of course except bell <laughs> But yes, all of you Well, I got that one, so... Oh, God. Oh, no. Aw, not a good roll, okay, too. Okay, don't need anyone to make any more rolls, because, um... Okay, uh... Give me a second, I'm rolling a 1d4 here. Ow. <laughs> Actually, yes. So... One hour later, and you and all, uh, four, all four of you are in another alley, a little while away, panting heavily and with few bruises on you. You all take four points of non-lethal damage. See, what had happened is that you'd gone to climb on the roof, and the shop owner had not seen uh, Klaus when he lost his grip, 
And, well, let's just say that she didn't take quite... Exactly take too kindly to someone climbing onto her roof, a form of trespassing, and she was also very handy with a broomstick. Jay? Yes? So, um... Uh, Whisper would have done something as soon as they failed to climb up the up to the roof, and the shopkeeper showed up. Uh huh. So as soon as the shopkeeper came out angry, he would have dropped, uh, basically dropped out of the sky behind him and offered the shopkeeper a bribe. Oh wow. Uh, he would have had to. Uh, he would have had to duck because the shopkeeper just kind of just swang her broom wildly. <laughs> Okay. I mean, she missed it. She missed completely, so... Yes. But Whisper would pull out a handful of gold pieces and offer them to the shopkeeper. Would, would it be alright if we borrowed your roof real quick? Her eye... Which is an annoyance, but... I mean, she's not going to pass up that much money. Ah, <laughs> oh, rats, I already started to doodle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then he turns to the group and says, Alright, um... I suggest you all try again. <laughs> so yes, I rewinding... I climbing up there! So rewinding, this time you are able to get up to the... You are able to get up onto the roof. <laughs> sure. I'm looking at- you don't need to roll the climb check. I'm just gonna say, yeah, you get up on there. Taking- <laughs> for taking ten. Pretty much, okay. yep. Okay, let's take ten. Shoot, shoot, shoot. If you're oh, gonna- you what all managed to get up onto the roof. Alright, and oh, What is with all this secrecy? There's <sighs> the guy with multiple names. Oh, good point, Klaus. It was not a judgment, it was a genuine question. Why are we doing this in private? I wanted to know the answer. Alright. Because I should not exist, dear sir. Uh, Whisper looks behind him, looks around. He's like... You, you have a ghost in your party. Indeed they do. And she rises semi-translucently out of Klaus's body to the point where only sort of, like, her knees down are still connected inside of him. So you can kind of see what she looks like, but, like, not physically, con like, not completely opaque. But you can sort of see colors and shapes of what she's lo she looks like. So, I'm imagining as soon as she does that, Whisper jumps probably 30 feet into the air. <laughs> and I mean literally 30 feet. <laughs> Ooh, you're five. Sorry, but you're only. You're five feet under Dogie's. Under Klaus's current record. <laughs> uh, what I mean is he's actually suspended in the air. <laughs> oh, he can fly. That explains a lot. And immediately he start <laughs> after like a minute he of like confusion. He looks. He's like going off of everyone else's reaction. He just starts breaking down laughing because he just thinks it's such a hilarious joke that they have a ghost in the party. I'm glad he's at least entertained. <laughs> Not quite. The <laughs> you called me a coward. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's very salty about it. <laughs> So, I take it this is the uh, the mascot of the party. No, that's Mr. Fluffles. <laughs> Fluffles. She points Klaus. down to uh, Klaus's hedgehog. Fluffles. Yeah, Klaus pulls out Mr. Fluffles, which is a hedgehog. Hey, okay, give me a give me a second. I just need to make a couple of rolls. <laughs> Jay, don't kill it. Jay! <laughs> Jay, you do that and I will look for a rear! <laughs> that was 3D20s! How did you miss? <laughs> <laughs> Jay, you don't mind 
don't mind the lasers that suddenly fire all around if you all around you hitting nothing. <laughs> Wait, what? Nothing. <laughs> at all. You, you, you see and hear nothing. <laughs> Sarah's like, oh, oh, yes. We're all the audience. Shay hates my hedgehog. <laughs> Absolutely loathes it. I don't hate the hedgehog, I hate it. I hate its name. <laughs> Live with it. In any case. It's worth yeah. it for long. In any case, yes, they. We. I have a ghost. Okay, how and why? Good question. Long story. With no actual answer. At least not really? that I know of. So, you're dead? Yep. So, you, and you don't know how? Uh, burned. burned alive. Oh, colorful. And, uh, do you know why? Uh, I believe at one point I was a golden lion. Although I really frankly couldn't give a darn either way. Perhaps it was because I didn't enjoy the war effort. Or maybe I was collateral damage in starting the war over again. I don't know. I don't even remember when I died. I guess it was, oh, a couple of decades ago. My daughter seems to be at least in her 20s or 30s. Oh, yes, I have a daughter. All right. Uh, also... And you were trying to make a neutral camp. Wait, oh. You were oh, that's nice. Oh. Uh, wasn't I nice? Oh, sorry. You're not quite sure whether it was the fight, whether it was the fire, the suffocation by smoke, or simply being crushed by falling building that killed you first. Burn the alive, way. Burn <laughs> alive sounds simple enough. Well, I suppose the next logical question would be, um. Why are you not passed on? Why are you journeying with us? Once again, excellent question that I don't know the answer to. You don't know why you're with us. You're just tagging along because. For the long. I like, I like them. He looks over at the rest of them. Yes. Charming bunch. Hey. The easiest explanation is to... What we've been able to figure out with a lot of these events is, as we stated in our um, report, at, when we got to the campsite and and began the investigation, we learned that they were trying to use the souls of the dead to reactivate the golems. As oh, far yeah. as we know, that was when Vel returned. Uh, need to make a quick clarification, because that's basic information I gave you. Yep. They came across this plan when they first heard about Vel's spirit wandering the area. Oh. So her spirit had already been around before that point. I woke up Though your actions from time. fully awoken her. I wake up. I woke up from time to time. I don't remember them much, though. Just That's sort of... Him. I suppose the conflict gave me some sort of anchor and purpose, and frankly, I remember in life thinking that the whole conflict was stupid. Perhaps wanting to end that stupidity is what keeps me here. Mm. Mm. Frankly, I could not care less whose dong was bigger between the two kings. <laughs> And Frankly, course, I'd rather just cut them both off and have it be done. And of course, course not mine. This no. island, as an, and of course, this island has always been known to have strange magics to it. I was going to say unique, but yeah. Hmm. In any case, what they said in their reports was true. They just didn't add that they had a fourth person helping. Hey. Yes. A X person, I suppose you could say. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting loophole, not technically a lie. I do the same thing all the time. Mm -hmm. 
I find my existence is a loophole. It's rather fun. <laughs> hmm. I can relate. And now I have a roommate. She points down at Klaus. And two bodyguards, I suppose. <laughs> well, they... I can say without a doubt it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. And if you ever try to possess me, I will attempt to banish you. So, there's Ban that. Banish? Yes, um, some, I believe, call it an exorcism, but same deal. Well, to be fair, I do not enjoy actively possessing people. Taking away people's free wills is exactly why I didn't enjoy the conflict in the first place. I feel like the propaganda gave people a little bit of an issue thinking for themselves, so I'm very against taking away people's free will. I'm very happy to just sit inside Klaus's head and watch. Well, so long as it's Klaus's head and not mine, we should get along well. Alright. I do also shadow Kuhn on Corum every once in a while, but I shall endeavor to stay out of yours unless you are on the brink of death and I have to move you. I'd probably rather you just let me die in that case. <laughs> 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 oh, well, that's a moral conundrum. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll just possess one of the other two to carry you. Mm. So. She, ha she, she sort of slinks back down into Klaus and just says only to Klaus, I guess that was better than I thought it was going to go, but I still don't like his reaction. As soon as he like disappeared, in, as soon as she disappeared into Klaus, he, you can see like a like a like a visible shiver run down his spine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not more like this. <laughs> Wait, what? Klaus is like it's really all not. It's really not that all that unpleasant. So. <laughs> I don't think he cares, dear. I feel like I need to take a bath. <laughs> Alright, and, uh, was there any other business we needed to attend to for the rest of the evening? Uh, just me and Klaus. I need to pay a visit to my former family. <laughs> hmm. You and Klaus? Hmm. Okay then. <laughs> he just kind of starts backing towards the uh, towards the edge of the roof. Yes, fear me. <laughs> fear the small one. Grogu, you are doing art of that. That is an order. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yes. Vel, Klaus, are you planning to go meet up with Rhea? Yeah, I think if Klaus will let me. Well, of course. All right. Because I don't actively possess people because that's rude. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was I mean, too blase. I mean, <laughs> like a I don't possess people. No, I mean, okay, active, there's a difference between passive possession, which is what I do with Klaus, and active possession, which is where I control your movements. Like going into someone's house without asking permission. Yeah. Except See, far I'm, more right impersonal. Now, yeah, oh, it's, it's, I just thought of a terrible joke. It's roommate versus dictator. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Alright, so, uh, I. Did we need to go over plans? Uh, sleeping accommodations? What's for dinner? You guys can handle. You guys can handle that in later bit. We're just. We're, I think we'll move on to what uh, Vel is doing with her family. So, Klaus, you follow you and Vel follow the instructions to meet Rhea. You go to the uh, residential part of the city. And, yeah, you see Rhea in the location you were told to meet her. She's wringing her hands a bit. She's 
obviously, she looks both excited and also kind of nervous. She's got a uh, thick, a uh, fairly thick jacket on at the moment. What? What do you do?